Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Fargo and West Fargo have already proclaimed this day as Landon Solberg Day to honor a boy who touched the hearts of so many people with his brave fight against cancer. And now it's time to say goodbye and celebrate Landon's life. Family and friends are gathering right now at Shields Arena in South Fargo for a memorial service. Visitation began at 4 and runs until 5.30. The funeral will follow at 6, where thousands of people are expected to gather to remember the life of Landon. As much as we, under, we, we try to understand why this happened, you know, what, what can we take from this? What would Landon want his legacy to be? And, and that's the selfless person that he was, that he brought all of us together. Uh, a 12-year-old was way more mature than 98% of us adults. The family is asking anyone who attends the funeral to forget about wearing black and instead honor their son's love of life by wearing Landon's light t-shirts or bison gear or Eagles or Broncos jerseys, Star Wars or even Harry Potter shirts. A Fargo man who's accused of driving drunk and crashing his car, subsequently killing his son, changed his plea today. Officials say Christopher Devine changed his plea to guilty in court this morning. He's charged with vehicular homicide and vehicular injury. Both are felonies. Police say Devine was drunk and going about 60 miles per hour on South University Drive just before the crash last March. His seven-year-old son died several days later and his five-year-old son was seriously hurt. Devine had a blood alcohol level of 0.267 following the crash. He'll be sentenced within the next 90 days. Grand Forks police are reminding you to lock up your stuff following a string of thefts that have happened within the last week. This is a map of all the theft-related calls. Each dot on the map is a theft from either a home or vehicle. Police say the most common items reported missing from a vehicle are phones, wallets, purses, backpacks, and cash. We are welcoming our first day of fall with a big dose of sunshine, but it'll really feel like fall soon. Nathan joins us now with your no wait weather with a look ahead. Nathan? Yeah, Andrea, that's right. Fall is here and uh, the more summer-like temperatures were with us today with that sunshine, but I am tracking a much more fall-like forecast ahead. But today, wind gusts, we're seeing a wind gust of 18 miles per hour there in Valley City. Sustained winds between 10 and 15 out of the southwest for uh, the five o'clock hour here on Monday and that has been working to keep our temperatures a bit on the more mild side with those temperatures near 80 down near pier has uh, wandered uh, that warmer has wandered into the Red River Valley with middle 70s up and down the Red River Valley still lower 70s in our Minnesota counties but by and large a pretty great day to be outdoors for the first day of fall as you see only a few thin clouds moving in from the Bismarck area and those clouds may move in overnight tonight but we do see the southerly winds continue with temperatures only dropping to around 60 by midnight in Fargo and around 59 by midnight for our friends in Grand Forks. So, of course, we are tracking a less warm, more warm pumpkin spice latte forecast head. Andrew, and I'll have that coming up here in just a couple minutes. You make it sound so, so good. Yeah, <laughs> well, fall is here. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. The search for a missing swimmer came to a tragic end after authorities in Minnesota found a body in the Redwood River. The body, which searchers believe to be Thunder Brothers of All, was recovered on September 21st by three men on kayaks. The men were searching for the man who had disappeared on September 15th when he was taken away by a strong current while swimming in the river near Ramsey Park. Officials believe the remains belong to Brothers of All, but an autopsy will officially confirm the identity and cause of death. A man is now in jail after police say he sped off from officers, crashed through an airport fence, and was then found at a Fargo hotel. 27-year-old Kevin Kroshilski of West Fargo is now facing multiple charges, including reckless endangerment and criminal trespass. Police found him this morning at the Fargo Inn and Suites. Authorities say they tried to pull him over early yesterday morning in North Fargo, but he took off, going 100 miles an hour. Officers were then called to Hector Airport later in the morning on reports of someone who crashed through the fence. A 34-year-old man is behind bars on charges he vandalized a popular Chinese restaurant downtown. The call came in at 4 Sunday morning about a man spray painting on the building of King House Buffet. When police got there, they found 34-year-old Thomas Johnson still spraying the building. He was arrested for criminal mischief. Authorities in Minnesota's Clearwater County want your help finding a missing man. Wilmer Hanks, who also goes by Will, was last seen this past Saturday by Lower Rice Lake. The Sheriff's Department believes Hanks was harvesting wild rice and got separated from his party. If you have any information on his whereabouts, you're urged to call police. 
Dilworth locals will no longer be able to park on the street for most of the day, twice a week, starting next month. One concerned community member contacted our whistleblower hotline saying many will have nowhere to park. Valley News team's Rose Itzkovitz speaks with the community and brings their questions to City Hall. This is a giant inconvenience. Visit just about any residential road in Dilworth and you'll find at least one, if not many, cars parked on the street. I've got three vehicles and the camper. Jessica Larson can't fit all her vehicles in her driveway and she's a stay at home mom. A lot of people already don't have driveways to park and have to park on the street and they're single moms that are stuck with their kids. Come October 1st, every Tuesday and Wednesday, side street parking is banned 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. Dilworth City Administrator Peyton Mastera says the change comes because the city is switching to curbside garbage and recycling. The results were overwhelming that people wanted this service. And I'm told he's not wrong about that. They're saying basically figure it out. A second stay-at-home mom asking to stay anonymous says she's happy people can now leave recycling with trash. But as far as the parking goes... I do not believe that anyone voted on the parking. They just put the vote through. No, that, that was just something that was passed by the city council to go to that. Why can't they do like alternate side parking? Because just like keeping everything off limits, people have nowhere to park. If we had a larger community that we could do, oh yeah, you can park on this side of the street one day and this side of the street the other day, we would. We're just not really that large to support that. They're in town one day to do the garbage collection. That's it. But Mastera says certain commercial areas, like the elementary school, Head Start, and parks, will have exemptions. For instance, here at Whistle Stop Park, you can park on the side street here on 4th Street Northeast, but not on the major street, which back here is Center Avenue. Mastera says there's a learning curve. People will be issued warnings. It's not like they're going to be out there October 1 at 5.01 a.m. throwing tickets on every vehicle. In Dilworth, Rose Iskavis, Valley News Live. The city administrator tells us the exemptions to no street parking will be officially passed in tonight's city meeting. That will be at 6 p.m. To read the list of exemptions, head to our website and click on this story. If you need help with an issue in your community, call our whistleblower hotline 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kevin McAleenan says the number of people crossing the U.S. southern border is down dramatically and conditions for migrants at border facilities have improved. Secretary McAleenan delivered the positive news in the nation's capital this morning at the Council on Foreign Relations. Today, I'm pleased to report that daily arrivals are down 64 percent from our peak in May and total enforcement actions for Central Americans arriving at the border have been reduced by over 70 percent. Critically, uh, as well, we have dramatically improved the conditions and care in our border facilities. McAleenan also stressed the need for work on fundamental immigration laws, saying the country is still at crisis levels in what he termed illegal crossings at the southwest border. A 16-year-old climate action activist scolds world leaders for their inaction. Greta Thunberg in the pink shirt taking the stage at the United Nations Climate Action Summit today. This was part of a youth dialogue panel with the UN Secretary General. Thunberg telling world leaders her generation and those to come will judge their failures. You are failing us. But the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. Officials say President Donald Trump, a climate change skeptic, arrived later and listened to two other summit speakers, the Indian Prime Minister and German Chancellor, Angela Merkel. Wildlife officials say a midge-borne disease is responsible for the death of a deer in southeastern Minnesota. The Department of Natural Resources says epizootic, hemorrhagic, or EHD, was confirmed in the death of a wild deer near Caledonia in Houston County. Earlier this month, EHD killed two deer in central Minnesota in Stearns County. While the disease generally results in a short-term drop in an area's deer population, there's a risk of more severe outbreaks in Minnesota due to the historic lack of exposure. Officials say it's not a threat to humans or animals outside the deer family. The North Dakota Game and Fish Department and Ducks Unlimited are co-sponsoring a trailer full of waterfowl, 
hunting gear available to families with young hunters. The trailer is free and equipped with goose and duck decoys for field hunting, floating duck decoys, and marsh seats for hunting a wetland. To reserve equipment, you can contact Ducks Unlimited at 355-3500.